Hi guys, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today's video is why I will never say the D word. Now, I, I refer to the Ds as sounding like the brilliant actor Matt Damon. And today I'm going to give you some reasons as to why I never say the word like a fallen angel type okay first of all we must agree here that movies do show hints of the truth even the crazy wild ones out there which we laugh at if we go back to the 80s um, Michael Keaton and Gina Davis starred in a movie called Beetlejuice Gina Davis's character is killed going over a bridge and they go back to the house unaware that they are ghosts her and her husband so what happens is because it's been a while since I've seen the movie they find a certain name and they call that name out three times huh funny thing that three it always comes in threes have you noticed even in my book when I was standing in heaven look at the three entities father son Holy Spirit that's a three threes come in many many ways and forms correct so let's go there to something else that I thoroughly believe in I like watching the show Ghost Hunters it stars Zach Bagans he has actually stated in many of his videos that what we watch on TV can actually come through the screen into our houses. Now, let's go there with a little conspiracy theory. Why do you think they say of a night time we're bringing the news right into your house? Because they know that when they speak on camera, the words spoken create energy so therefore somebody sitting in their lounge room in their pajamas on a Saturday night watching a sad news story they get inflicted by that story and they get sad also let's go scientific here the way this works is by pheromones we emit chemicals <coughs> inside our body excuse me because it's extremely cold here and I've lost my voice so we emit chemicals from within our body which are called pheromones they extend out of us externally and are picked up by other beings animals plants and humans so if we're happy and we're standing next to somebody else that person will feel those happy hormones okay now how does it come through electricity like televisions iPads phones computers etc how I believe this works with all my training is because even though I'm not near you right now my word that I say is also contagious so if we stay in um, science for a moment it is now proven through neuroplasticity of our brain studying the neurons and the, pro um, the photons their neurons and the electrons that happen in our brain waves that we have what's called synaptic synapt start again synaptic networks this is where we retain memories so you know how when you make a cake over and over yes it's just so easy to do it but you get on a bike the first time you can't do it because we haven't got a synapses in our neuroplasticity that lets us know that we've done it before so therefore it's safe so let's go there deeper with this ghosts and spirits that come through as well as the D's they listen wherever they are in the ether to what we say 
because our words are through that neurons all processing in our brain capacity, right? I'm trying to say this in layman's terms because I know some very techy techy words and I don't want to go there because I want to keep this layman's terms, okay? So we all understand it. But when we have an intention in our brain, it sparks a reaction which leads to the do-do-do-do-do-do-do's down to our mouth where we say the word. Mm. Mm. We say the b, b. See how my ch- mouth is changing to say a B? Because my brain has ignited a spark that lets me say a B or an M. Okay? So what happens is it's not only just our words. It's that spark of atoms in our brain through our synaptic neuroplasticity that generates the energy. Oh, we're getting there finally. The energy that produces itself emits out of us and attaches to other people like a pheromone. So if I say the D word, what I'm actually doing is not just creating it for me. I am allowing them to use that electric charge where I've created it in my thought processes, but I have now allowed them through consent, because I'm saying it, they've now got the three free will to come through the computer and attach to me sitting here in Browns Plains, Queensland. What? That's correct. That's correct. The more we think and the more that we say what our intention is, the more we give it energy to manifest. Now, speaking of Zach Bagans, he had two friends. They used to dabble with a Ouija board. Stupid, stupid, stupid when you don't know what you're doing. Because the more we dabble with Ouija boards, what we're doing is inviting in anything, anything that may be pretending to be something else. Remember, these entities, they know what your grandmother looked like. They know how your dad sounded. So they'll come through and pretend to be a little girl. Or someone else that you know to get your trust because once they come in it is extremely hard to get rid of them because they're invited I never ever say ever that anything is invited to stay in my house I actually say to my ghosts that come here I say You are welcome to stay as long as you obey my rules. But the first breach, you are gone. You have no right or permission to breach my rules. If you do, you're gone in a heartbeat. And I have got rid of some ghosts here. Not that I send them through the vortex or the portal or to the light. It's that I get them out of my house. They can go wherever the heck they want if they are not going to obey my rules. I always say, my house, my rules. That's not being harsh. It's not being cruel. It's me saying, if you're here, you respect me. Okay? So, why don't I ever say the D word? Because I do not allow them to have energy. I will not manifest within my brain capacity of all my neurons, electrons and photons, electrons, etc. I will not manifest somewhere where they can come through and just reach through because they're in a different dimension. So they come through either through a portal, vortex, time warp, whatever you want to call it, Stargate, whatever it is that they come through by, I do not allow them to have that energy. So what happened to Zach Bagan's friends? They started dabbling 
with a Ouija board. They got very, very sick, extremely unhealthy. They were always in and out of hospital over months and months until the time came where they got so angry, so bitter with each other that they both ended up dead. It's out there. You can go research this stuff because that's one of many, many stories where people have ignorantly because <laughs> this is ignorance guys if you don't know what you're doing if you're dabbling with things that you don't know oh it's so cool I'm going to use this Ouija board oh it's so cool I'm going to call in these D's but once you've got them in your life they are extremely hard to get rid of and they make your life a living hell. You know, I've watched Lucifer, the whole series starring Tom Ellis. The whole series, I've watched every single episode. And it makes it cool to be like Mazakim. Maze, they call her for short. She's a D. So they are trying to make us familiar and want to be like them. Why do you think they're doing that? Because they're trying to make us humans more and more negative. Everything we see on TV now is negative. We look at shows. Now, this is in my personal opinion. Shows like Love Island, where you've got these beautiful people in ball gowns and tuxedos drinking wine. How are they ever going to know what that other person is like? Unless you're sitting in their house, watching how their toilet habits are, how often they um, blow wind out of their butts, how many skid marks they leave in their undies, that sort of stuff. And you wonder why these relationships all fail when they are based on materialistic gains, which is straight from the D's. They want us living negatively. They don't want us looking within. They don't want us to be empowered and strong because then that takes away their strength. That takes away their control. And most of all, when we're living in a higher vibration of, ah, they don't like it. They have to run away and hide. Pardon me. And I'm not saying they just hide behind a tree. They go under a rock because they're negative energies. And they look around for someone who's gullible. For someone ignorant. They look around for people who think it's cool to be in paranormal groups. And they attach to them. And the worst part is you don't even know that you've got them attached to you. Unless someone else points it out. You just always wonder why your life is always down the toilet. You wonder why you never get promoted. Because D's don't want you to succeed. So I never say their names. I don't give them power. And finally, I'm going to tell you a real story of what happened here at my house one night involving a D. I used to have a meet-up group. And... I had about 15 people coming over for a meet and greet. Um, I actually advertised it, come along, meet um, other psychic people who are interested in paranormal. So about 15 people turned up this night and this couple turned up, I saw them both get out of their car, a male and a female, but behind them it looked like Robin Hood. He was wearing a dark green hat that came to a point. He had a tattered green shirt on with his pants he had boots and on his back he had a quiver full of arrows and he was holding a bow and I thought wow I didn't I didn't say it was a dress up party you know it's not Halloween yet so when the three came to my door I said hi guys I'm Linda and then the first lady said oh hi my name is I don't know I'll just make up a name Alice the second guy came in, he said, oh, good day. my name is, I don't know, I'll make up a name, the Mad Hatter. <laughs> and I looked at the third and he just walked in the house and I thought, that's a bit rude. 
So when they came inside, I said, oh, what's your friend's name? And they said, I'll explain him, because they could not see him at that point. So I explained him, and they said, oh, yeah, that's our D. We, we give him alcohol. We, we look after this guy. And I thought, what? You're not bringing that into my house? So they had all these books and they showed me a photo of him and it was exactly what I was looking at, like Robin Hood. And I said, you can get all that out of my house. I don't want that in my house because I don't go into dark energies. So they took the books and they put them near the front door, still in my house, and I got a bit upset with that because they'd already just broken my rule. I don't want those things in my house and they left them in the house. So they went outside and there was a couple of people outside who quickly knew these guys were not welcome. So I told them to leave. They left. So I went down into my bedroom, and guess what was sitting on my bed? Which is also a big breach, because I never allow any entity, ghost or spirit, into my bedroom. Because that's my sanctuary, that's my cave, that's my protected place. And this thing was sitting on my bed. So I went out the back of my house and there was a guy here and, I, and who's done a lot of paranormal investigations. He knows what he's doing. And I said, mate, can you please go down to my bedroom and tell me what you see? And he came back and not only did he tell me what this guy looked like, he also pointed to the exact spot on my bed where this guy was sitting. So we all bundled up into a, my dining room. We all stood in a circle. And we called in the archangels to get rid of this D out of my house. Now, please know what I'm about to tell you is rare. This does not generally happen. Because I don't know what it was that night, whether it was me, I'm too humble to say it was me. But I'm going to tell you what happened. We all stood in a circle. Straight away, as we were all saying, please, guardian angel, Michael, come down. We need your strength. We need your warrior instincts to get rid of this thing out of Linda's bedroom. The whole room started to swirl like a tornado. Faster and faster. The people on the other side of the circle, I could not even see them. The people next to me, I could not even talk to them because it was so windy in this wind haze pardon me it was like we were being lifted up off the ground and this went on for minutes maybe three or five minutes this big swirl my whole house was like um, Judy Garland in Wizard of Oz at the beginning where she's in the tornado then it all dissipated and went away the guy is sitting like standing across from me he's looking at me going and I looked at him and I said, what's wrong? And he said, oh, 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 oh. He could see something. So I've looked to my left and I saw a white wing. Huge it was. I looked to the other side and I could see the other wing. Beautiful white feathered wings. And this guy across from me is still like, So as I turned, the wings left and it was like a shot straight up into the air. I felt it. Even my hair moved. So as he energised up and he left the house, he left two feathers on the ground. Now, I've got a feather here that I used the other day because I wanted to talk about the quill. The two feathers on my ground were about four foot long. And see this little bit of the quiver? In comparison, imagine that this long. And see the depth of it? It was about that thick. So it was huge. And the feather was about four foot long. Beautiful parts of the feather. So we both saw the two feathers on the ground. And then one of the group said, I need to get a photo of this. 
Now, isn't it funny when somebody says, hey, I'm going to get a photo, you all look at the guy saying it. <laughs> so we all looked at this guy running to get his phone camera and the two feathers disappeared. They were gone. But there was eight people in my house that night who all saw the feathers on the ground. And I don't know how many saw the winged being behind me. But the guy straight across from me, I said to him, what did you see that night? And he will not tell me. He said, it's like the fear of God was instilled in him because it was so powerful, yet it was so good. So we must believe in our angels, guys, because I've seen angels a few times in my life. Would have been cool to get a photo of those feathers. <laughs> How cool would it be to frame one of those feathers like they did in Lucifer when he dropped his wings? But ultimately, we don't need those proofs because the proof is not external to us. The proof is within us. And it is what is within us that we create into our reality. And that is why I will never say the D word. Hope you've liked this one, guys. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.